Hello students. Now we are going to have our lesson uh, which uh, we will devote to modal verbs. Uh, you know the situation is not simple. That's why let us do our best and learn the material. Um, at the beginning I will tell you some words concerning the theory of uh, using modal verbs and then uh, you will see exercises uh, on this topic. The exercises will be divided into two parts. Uh, the first one will uh, part uh, will be easier um, for certificate level and uh, the second half uh, will be a, diff a more difficult one um, for those uh, who want to do exercises from the advanced level. So, let us start. You know that modal verbs um, are separated into a um, um, into uh, such a class uh, which distinguish them from other verbs. Let us see what are the reasons why modal verbs uh, differ from the others. Perhaps you know that modal verbs are called, are sometimes called um, defective verbs. So, what are the reasons? 1. Modal verbs do not express any action. We know that verb, uh, any verb, um, means or denotes some action. Modal verbs are not like that. Um, they show the attitude of the speaker to the action expressed by the infinitive, which follows. 2. Modal verbs function as auxiliaries. That means that if we need to make a question or a negation, we do not um, use any auxiliary, but work with the modal verbs like for example can you swim or i can't swim three modal verbs do not take any suffixes they do not add s in the third person singular or ing form or any other so modal verbs are used only in present simple and past simple. They do not have future forms. None of the modal verbs have a future form. On the other hand, the form which we use for the present can safely used for the future. Like, um, can we meet on Friday? If Friday is coming. Um, all mo uh, uh, three or four, perhaps. Uh, all modal verbs are followed by the bare infinitive. Uh, it means that they are followed with the infinitive without particle two. Uh, the exception is um, modal verb ought, which is always followed by a two infinitive. Four. Um, there can be only one modal verb in a simple sentence. Uh, we can use a modal verb and its substitute, but not two modal verbs in one simple sentence. Modal verbs have no infinitive. Other expressions must be used instead.
this looks like all I wanted to tell you concerning the theory. You know that um, modal verbs are used uh, to express ability. We have uh, m uh, verbs like can and could for expressing ability. Um, they can also express uh, likelihood or assumptions and deductions. Modal verbs must, can't, could, may, and might can be used here. Obligations can be expressed by the modal verbs must, need, ought to, should. Permission. Permission is expressed by means of can, may, and could. There are some other verbs which are by some grammarians called semimodals. Here belong need, dare, and used to. Now, what, um, what about the meaning? Um, we can make a scale um, beginning with must where um, then go will, would, ought to, should, can, could, may, and might. This scale shows the difference in certainty or uncertainty. Or, in other words, um, we can speak here about the second meaning or secondary meaning of modal verbs. Um, what do you want to say? That we know that modal verbs have their own meaning, like uh, must expresses uh, inex inescapable obligation. Then will and would express prediction. Uh, should and ought to express escapable obligation, can, could mean ability, and might and may mean permission. But all these modal verbs uh, can express this or that degree of certainty. Due, uh, the, the degree, as, we have, as I have said, uh, we can show on that scale. So, must means the strongest certainty, might means the slightest. I must say that all modal verbs keep their first meaning anyway, even though they may express this certainty or uncertainty, uh, such um, meaning as, for example, obligation or ability will be present anyway. Um, then um, let us think. I have said that in the first meaning modal verbs can have only two tenses, present and past grammatically. Um, how can we see, how can we show that this or that modal verb um, expresses the reference to the present or past in their secondary meaning. You must understand that if we speak about the secondary meaning, the form of the modal verb doesn't denote the tense, the reference to the tense. Like, I mean, uh, uh, the form could doesn't mean that it is past in comparison with can. It only means that um, we have a slighter degree of certainty. This slighter degree of certainty, um, by the way, um, also mean uh, politeness. Politeness and um, they sound more official. So, 
um, I return to my idea concerning the reference to the present or past um, in the sec uh, of modal verbs in the secondary meaning. Um, in this case, uh, only the form of the infinitive can help us. Uh, if we want to refer the action to present, we use a simple infinitive, like for example, mm, uh, we can we can start our meeting easily, or we can have our meeting easily. Um, and the form start shows that the action refers to the present or future. If I want to say similar sentence but uh, referring to the past, um, I must use, so to say, perfect infinitive. Uh, it means uh, after modal verb we use have and then the third form of the um, auxiliary verb. Um, I mean uh, the sentence he must be at home shows that the action refers to the present but he must have been at home means that it happened yesterday or some time in the past. So perfect infinitive can be used here. Um, I must also add that uh, in present I must also add that um, if we speak about the first meaning of modal verbs uh, some models have uh, their substitutes, their synonyms. Uh, like, we know that must has two synonymous expressions. Uh, they are to have to and to be to. To have to um, means um, some some um, obligatory action uh, which w some person has to do due to, due to the circumstances. It shows that it is not his or her choice but the circumstances that make them do it. That's why uh, we usually uh, translate it as вынужден, приходится. What concerns to be to? Um, it um, means uh, pre-arranged, uh, some pre-arranged action, uh, previous arrangement, uh, like uh, I am to meet my aunt in the airport. Я должен встретить тетю в аэропорту, and uh, we must understand that uh, this uh, action uh, was pre-arranged. Uh, what concerns modal can? It has four substitutes. The first one, which we all know, uh, is to be able to. It also, of course, means ability, uh, but uh, the difference is that if can means uh, general ability, to be able to um, refers to the ability in some definite situation. The next one, to be capable of, be capable of, which is followed by a gerund or a noun, means the person's ability. The, uh, the third one, to manage, to manage mm, presupposes um, some obstacle which a person overcame and managed to do the action. And the last one is um, to succeed in, which is also followed by either a gerund or a noun. Uh, succeed, due to the form of the verb, means successful completion of the action. Um, I want to draw your attention attention to the fact that 
uh, to be able to and to manage to are followed by infinitives, while uh, to be capable of and uh, to succeed in are followed by gerunds. Uh, the next verb which has um, substitutes is may. May can be substituted by to be allowed to or to be permitted to. Um, meaning permission or absence of permission. Um, the difference in meaning is very slight. I can only say that to be permitted to sounds rather official. And, uh, as you have noticed perhaps, um, both of the substitutes are used in passive. Modal, none of modal verbs um, has a passive form. Substitutes do have. One more important thing that I want to draw your attention to is um, modal verbs are followed by bare infinitives as I have said except or to all the substitutes are followed by two infinitives or gerunds as I have mentioned besides um, if we want to make an um, um, negative or interrogative forms uh, we should use either be if it is present in the in the expression or we can use any auxiliary depending upon the tense you want to use uh, this modal expression in uh, modal expressions can be used in practically any tense now Now, um, I have uh, prepared a number of exercises uh, which I want you to do. Uh, after the exercises, you will see the keys, but I uh, really on, uh, rely on you and on your responsibility and think that you will First, make the exercises and do the exercises, and then you will uh, look through the keys. If the second level, I mean advanced level, mm, uh, is too difficult for you, it's up to you, but um, try to do everything. Uh -huh. By the way, what concerns uh, the homework you are supposed to do, uh, the homework uh, will be on the site. Um, in the same place, you will find the keys. This is one thing I wanted to tell you. And one more. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the commentary uh, uh, which will follow this video. Mm, this is the way how we will keep our contact. Thank you.